in the name of the Lord who created us and uh, bestowed us with these sort of fortunes. <clears throat> At the entrance of the adult tinkering labs that are being established in India by the support and the grant from the central government, we can see the board and on the sign board we can read like this play area only if you want to play with science guests of honors my dear prominent uh, people of course the parent community and the faculty members along with my beloved students ladies and gentlemen and donning the position of a speaker as part of this TED show and proudly privileged to be talking on the futuristic education. And being in the shoes of an educator, an educationalist, I want to tell you something that is significant from my heart actually. You know, taking any other things, for the last 15 or 17 years, I've been into education, starting from higher education up to preschool industry. I've been doing many services to various organizations in India and abroad. I take you to an example. You know that we are being threatened by Omicron again. And last almost two years, we all were shot. We all were controlled by and unthinkable or even unpredictable i would say the virus stopped us from everything but due to this covid 19 pandemic actually what has happened in the educational sector i'll give you an example of 11th standard 11th grade boy he's now doing his 11th and he is believe me he is teaching and training coding for hundreds of students who are doing their MS and MTEC programs in the countries like UK, US, and Canada as part of their postgraduate programs of the BTEC or graduation. What I'm telling you, you can name these sort of students who have come over, who have just taken our hearts during this COVID-19 pandemic. And what has happened in our schools? Starting from if we just recall the Guru Kul actually, from the Guru and Disciple relationship all the way just before COVID, where were we? Our campuses, our schools and colleges, where were we starting? We were simply using digital classrooms and we were proud enough to talk about it. We were even reluctant to get money, even, even the parents were reluctant to give money for that. But now, where are we standing? And there, comes the importance I gave you the reading the line at the entrance of tinkering lab science play with it in the laboratory were we able to imagine something before could we able to think like this before playing in the laboratory we will be suspended or dismissed from the campuses what I'm trying to tell you my dear friends as an educator I want to tell you understanding the gravity of the current situation and understanding the need of the future we got to act in our schools in our colleges educators management the topest authorities we have to act as in such a way that we are making our children the real global citizens the real global pearls the real global professional for that what we got to do even now even today, as part of teaching community, I'm telling you, even we are bothered about the marks the students are getting during the examinations. Even our students are asking us, what? Sir, what will be? Which will be the questions in our exam hall, on the examination hall, on the exam paper? We need to change it, my dear friends. And that's the reason I'm telling you, understanding the scenario, the current scenario. And I want you, boy, I told you, He's teaching. Al, an age standard student, he's the owner of a company having the turnover of 150 million 
dollars. A nine standard student, she is earning one lakh fifty thousand rupees by teaching, by training a language over the internet. Now the student, you know that he is teaching coding. His training coding has he's uh, uh, making two lakhs rupees per month. What I'm trying to tell you, we need to change the mindset, my dear friends. I would like to tell all the education people, educators, those people who are representing this educational sector. We are proud enough that we are part of schools and colleges, but we need to change our mindset. That's the point what I'm trying to tell you now. If we are not ready to change, the mindset will be thrown out. What we are trying to make it now, we are making normalization. We are trying to make memorization. We are trying to make a, 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 a normal classroom which will be fit for everybody. One size that fit for everybody. That we need to change from this. Understanding the scenario where the robotic professors, robotic lecturers are coming. What we need to again, we have to act now. Robotic professor, even before COVID-19, in Bangalore, there is a university. There was a robotic professor. It was teaching. It was coming to school. Now we are talking about artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, machine learning, nanotechnology, even cloud computing, edge computing, all these things we are talking. But how many of us is dare to do something? in terms of making these of technologies in our schools and colleges. There comes, there comes the role of immersive experiential laboratories where we as a teacher will not be needed for ever. Maybe out of 100 hours of classroom hours, we need to spend, we need to spend, we might need to spend maybe five of 10 hours in the classroom, the rest the avatars of Mansoor, the avatars of the professors and teachers will be doing the role, my dear friends. What I'm trying to tell you, we need to change the mindset of we people. Understanding, understanding the requirements by the corporates around the world. Now, anybody, if they are taking, if they are just making the interview process, what they are trying to consider, rather than the traditional certificates and diplomas, while they're trying to make it. There comes the importance of we people. We have to be the real mentors. We have to be as teachers and professors, we have to be the real clarifiers, the real mentors, the real guides and supporters. We are not gonna be teachers anymore because we are gonna be replaced by robotic health teachers and professors. I told you about experiential lab immersive experience lab what is going to happen we can make use of the technology and we can just create a voice and the rest our avatar will be doing what i'm telling you my dear friends the people the people around the world and of course the students around the world what they were doing all this COVID time did we teach them anything actually did we get any chance to make them practice to make them practice or to do some practicals for them from their side. No, we didn't get anything, but what they did. I know a student in Palakkad district, he started making robots at the age of 11, at the age of 11. And he started supplying automated vending machines that will be dispensing sanitizers to panjayats. What is happening actually? How many laboratory sessions as a school teacher we gave to that? child please understand there comes the importance and relevance of implementing what we are trying to make it through our oral things there comes the importance of the future skills futuristic education as we know please understand the world is being controlled by the technology i told you about technologies and these technologies are coming to merge our lives and we are the people to act first. So my dear friends, teachers, what I'm trying to tell you here, we have to act. The three points I want to give you from the shoes of an educator, 
and education is what I'm telling you. More, more self-discovery rather than doing memorization. Less memorization, more self-discovery. Less normalization, more individualization. What I'm telling you, now we are giving for a school, for a classroom, we are campus, we are setting some rules and we are giving in turn actually. We have to understand the aptitude and attitude of our children. Starting from the aptitude, understanding the aptitude, what do we call it? That or multiple intelligence based aptitude test. We have to understand the aptitude and the capacity and the need of a student and we got to support him for that. The children must be supported. A child, if he is interested to play, let him play. If a child is very much keen in understanding the people, in canvassing the people, in interacting with the people, we have to support him. He'll be a very good social worker. He will be shining as a politician or as a leader in future. If a child is interested to serve the humanity, to help his classmates, we have to understand that he got the capacity to help others. He could be, he could be shining best as a doctor, as a social worker, as a health worker. If he is very much interested in modest skills, in technical skills, we need to support him in his schools and campuses and colleges. We have to have special areas for this. And I'm telling you, my dear friends, there comes, there comes the importance again of teachers. I told you we are clarifiers. We are supporters, we are menders. On the other side, a robot is not having humility. A robot is not having the humanity. A robot is not having the values. A robot, whatever he is going to do, it could be taking us to the sun or even moon or Mars, but a robot cannot understand the minds of the people. And there comes the importance, being global, and being humane and giving these two points in futuristic education. Just making use of the possibilities of the technology, the water it is actually. We saw that. We have experienced it. Online learning, hybrid learning, whatever you call it actually, we have just understood the pluses and minuses of all these things. On the other side, on the other side, if as teachers, as mentors, if we can support our student community, our future citizens of this globe and universe in such a way that we are training them to be giving humility to others, to be giving obligation towards others, showing obligation towards others, being a real human being. We need to have this strong mentoring process happening rather than making our schools and colleges just the places for teaching them theories, please be understood that we got to make it the real skill stations in such a way that we are helping our children come up in terms of our future skills. And after these future skills, just like collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity, these are the things which are needed by even the biggest corporates when they are going to select or interview our children or our young, the next generation, my dear friends. Apart from, along with that, apart from these future skills, if we can act as a real mentor, a real counselor, so that a student, he becomes a real son and daughter, he becomes the real neighbor, he becomes the real citizen of his own country, and he becomes the real global citizens. My dear friends, from the shoes utilizing this platform, as I told you, all the way from flying, I just, I just chose this way of flying through the hearts of thousands of my students. I enjoy it as a teacher, as a trainer, as a mentor. I've been enjoying it for the last 17 years, and I'm telling you, please try to make our schools and colleges the real skill stations rather than the ordinary, the ordinary classrooms where 
we are imparting some theory process. No! We have the engineers, we have the doctors, we have the social workers, we have the business people, we have everything in our classrooms itself. Let them become the future CEOs, the future professionals, data scientists, uh, data architects, and AR, we are engineers, my dear friends. We can give them the support. We can start incubation centers. We can start entrepreneurs in development cells in our schools, starting from six standard itself. And there comes the schools. Our schools can create theory like our P school did today. So thank you very much for listening to me as part of this Futurist Education. Congratulations. And giving you one more word, please understand. Please, please, please take your role being a teacher. Please take your role to create the future global professionals and citizens. Wish you all the best.